looking then at the actual lesson four related rates. So the derivative dy dx of a function y equals f of x is the instantaneous rate of change with respect to the variable x, right? When a function describes either position or distance, its rate of change is, is interpreted as velocity. In general, a time rate of change answers the question, how fast is a quantity changing? For example, if the volume is that is changing dv dt is the rate, or how fast the volume is changing with respect to time. So you're filling something up, right? How fast is that volume changing over a time interval? If a person is walking towards a street lamp the constant rate, um, at a constant rate of three feet per second, then we know the distance is decreasing, because they're walking towards it, at negative three feet per second. Yes? If they walk away, then it's increasing. That di distance is increasing. All right. So guidelines for solving related rate problems. Make a sketch. Label your quantities, if appropriate. Read the problem, identify what we know, what is given, what can I find with the appropriate information. Write an equation involving variables whose rates of change either are given or you can determine them. Using the chain rule, implicitly differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to time. After completing step four, substitute into the resulting equation all of your known variables. So let's look at example one. Suppose x and y are both differentiable functions of t and are related by the equation y equals this right here. It says find dy dt when x is 3 and it gives us some other values there, right? So the first thing we need to do is take the derivative of this with respect to time. So d over dt of y is what we're doing equals d over dt of x squared minus 3x. So let's start with that. So we get, we get dy over dt equals, the derivative of this would be what? 2x dx dt minus 3 dx dt. Is that fair? I just wrote it down. Okay. I just wrote down that that's what I'm doing, is the derivative with respect to time on both sides. That's all I did. The derivative with respect to time of both sides. Okay. And then I did that. Now, I could actually factor out what on the right-hand side? dx dt? Yeah. So is this fair to say this is 2x minus 3 dx dt? So, I am wanting to find, it says find dy dt when x equals 3. Yes? And then it gives me some other values here. But when x is 3, I know I can substitute in 2 times 3 minus 3. Yes? Yeah. Times, what is dx dt? So here, this is what? 6 minus 3 times 2, or 3 times 2. Mm -hmm. So the derivative of y with respect to time when x equals 3 is simply 6. Questions? So essentially, you're using your implicit differentiation, right? And they're going to be giving you some things, but then we're also going to have to find some things. So, a pebble is dropped into a calm pond, <clears throat> causing a ripple, causing ripples in the form of a concentric circles. So here, the pebbles dropped. We know it would do this, and then the circles would get bigger and bigger, right? And bigger, yes? 
the radius r of the outer ripple is increasing at a constant rate of one foot per second. When the radius is four feet, at what rate is the total area of the disturbed water changing? <laughs> so, what do we know? We know we're, we're dealing with a circle here, yes? Yes. And we're talking about an area, yes? So do we know the area of the circle? No. Uh, What's the formula for area? Oh. Pi r squared, yes? What are we given in there? It talks about the rate of the radius, doesn't it? So if we're talking about a rate of a radius, we're talking about the derivative of the radius with respect to time. Do you agree? Yeah. So the derivative of the radius with respect to time, it told us was increasing, so positive, one foot per second. Yes? Mm -hmm. What is it wanting? It's wanting the total area at the rate of the total area. So if it's wanting the rate of the total area, it's wanting the derivative of the area. Agreed? Yeah. Specifically, when the radius is four feet. So we wrote down what we know, what we're given, and what we need to find. Yes? Now, does that make it a little bit easier? Yeah, I need to find the derivative of A, right? So find the derivative of A with respect to time. That's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to do dA over dt, right? I'm going to actually I'm going to write down what I'm doing. So I'm not just going to do it. I'm going to write it down. I'm going to do the derivative with respect to time of both sides. The derivative with respect to time of both sides of that equation. That's what I need to do. Yes? So when you do that, you get the derivative of A over dt equals, this would be what, 2 pi r dr dt. Is that fair? Yeah. So now I need to substitute in because I have the information I need, don't I? Here, dA over dt, when r is 4 feet, would equal 2 pi times r is 4. What is dr dt? 1. So this is 4 feet, and this is 1 foot per second. Do you agree? So the derivative of the area with respect to time would then equal what? 8 pi. What are my units? Feet times feet would be feet squared over second. And I actually should have where r is 4 feet. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, because feet times feet, and think about area. Area is in feet squared, right? So I would suggest you write out your units when you're plugging them in because that helps you determine your units at the end. Okay. Okay? So when we drew a picture, we write down what we know, what we're given, what we need to find. It makes it a whole lot easier. Do you agree? So break it down. All right. And air is being pumped into a spherical balloon at a rate of 800 cubic centimeters per minute. How fast is the, so we want to know how fast the radius of the balloon is changing. At the instant rate, the radius is 30 centimeters. So we've got a spherical balloon. And our radius, so from the center out to the edge, is 30 centimeters. Air is being pumped into it, so you're talking about the volume of that. Do you agree? So the volume, what's the volume of a sphere? Do you remember? Four thirds. Pi r cubed. 
I think I think most of those will be given. Now, area of a circle, you need to know. The simple ones you're going to need to know. I will look into it, but I don't think you'll have to know all the volume for formulas. A highlighter? Mm, I'll think on that. Why aren't you taking the AP test? Okay. Okay. So, what are we given? So, what is the 800 cubic centimeters? That's the derivative of the volume. So, the derivative of the volume with respect to time is 800 centimeters cubed over minutes. What am I supposed to find? The radius is changing, right? So how fast the radius changes is going to be a derivative, right? Derivative of r with respect to time, specifically when the radius is 30 centimeters. <clears throat> Good? So, what's the first thing I need to do? Mm -hmm. So, V equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. The derivative would be dV over dt equals, if I bring my 3 down, I would get what? 4 pi r squared? Squared? D R D T. Is that fair? So four thirds times three is just four pi. Is that good? So then the second thing I need to do is substitute. I have D V D T, don't I? It is eight hundred centimeters cubed per minute equals four pi, my radius is 30 centimeters, and I need to square that, and I'm looking for dr dt, agreed? So I have 800 Centimeters cubed over minutes equals 4 pi times 30 would be what? 30 squared would be 9,000. 900. Yeah, 900. Yes, you're right. It is 900 centimeters squared dr dt. So... 800 centimeters cubed over minutes equals, what, 3,600 pi centimeters squared dr dt. Now, I need dr dt by itself, right? Yeah? Yeah. So, I divide by this, or would it be fair to say I'm going to multiply by 1 over 3,600 pi centimeters squared? Now, the reason I do that is because of the units, right? So, dr dt, when r is 30 centimeters, would equal, my zeros would cancel out here, um, my centimeter squared would cancel, and I'd just get centimeters over minutes for units, wouldn't I? Mm -hmm. And then 8 over 36 could reduce to what? Four goes in there, two over nine. So two over nine pi centimeters per minute. Yeah?
getting easier. All right, the top of a 25 foot ladder is sliding down a vertical wall. So here's a vertical wall. No, it's not good. So this 25 foot ladder and it's sliding down this wall, right? So it's sliding down the wall at a constant rate of three feet per minute. So this would be a Y value and this would be an X value if we were thinking horizontally, wouldn't we? Wouldn't it? So if that's true, then the rate that this is sliding down, dy over dt, we know, correct? What did it tell us? Mm -hmm. So dy over dt equals 3 feet per minute. When the top of the ladder is 7 feet from the ground, so that means when y equals 7, do you agree? What is a constant rate of the distance between the bottom of the ladder and the wall? So if we're talking about the distance from here to here, the rate of that, what are we talking about? Yeah. So we're trying to find dx over dt, specifically when y is 7 feet. Fair? All right, so we've got to find a formula for that. Well, thinking about a right triangle, x squared plus y squared equals? T squared. Yeah. So x squared plus y squared in this triangle would be equal to 25 squared. Is that fair? Okay. Make sense? So you really got to think through it as you go. All right. So... Looking at our formula, x squared plus y squared equals 25 squared. Let's do the derivative. We would have what? 2x dx over dt plus 2y dy over dt equals derivative of 25 is 0. Fair? Okay. Um... I'm trying to get dx dt, so I would get that by itself. And so to get that by itself, I need to move this over. So I'd have to subtract 2y dy dt to both sides. So I get 2x dx dt equals negative 2y dy dt. And I could probably uh, if I want dx dt by itself, I could divide by 2x. Agreed? So dx dt equals what? Nah, 2 over 2 would just be 1. Is that fair? So I'd get negative y over x dy dt. Now I have a y value and I have dy dt. I need to find what? an x value, correct? Yes. So, when y equals 7 feet, I need to know what x is. Well, can't I plug into that formula? x squared plus y squared equals 25 squared? Okay. Right? Pythagorean theorem? Yeah. So, x squared plus 7 squared equals 25 squared, is that fair? Yeah. So x squared would equal 25 squared minus 7 squared, or x would equal the square root of 25 squared minus 7 squared. Fair? Mm -hmm. So x equals... of seven or 576 which is 24 
So now I know that the derivative of x with respect to time, specifically when y equals 7, when y equals 7, we know x equals 24. I'd have negative 7 over 24, and I know what dy dt was. What was dy dt? 3 feet per minute. Yes. And then 24 would be feet too? Yep. So does it really matter? Because feet over feet didn't cancel. Okay. So dx dt is changing when, I, I need to say, specifically when y equals 7 and x equals 24, it's changing at, what, 3 goes into 24 8 times, so it would be what, seven eighths feet per minute? It would be. Does that make, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, because why is this negative? This one should have been negative because it's going down. This is increasing, that's why I was like, mm, it shouldn't be negative because this distance is increasing, isn't it? The x distance is increasing when the y in distance is decreasing. Yes? So it should have been positive there. So you should have had a negative over a negative, or a negative times a negative, which would have given us a positive. At noon, ship A is 150 kilometers east of ship B. Ship A is sailing west at 35 kilometers per hour, and ship B is sailing north at 25 kilometers per hour. How fast is the distance between the ships changing at 4 p.m.? <laughs> so here is our time noon, here is our time 4 p.m. So we know the horizontal distance between B and A is what? Um, a is 150 kilometers east of B. Yes? Is that fair? Yeah. So wherever B is, east. Okay. So thinking in terms of X. If A is 150, B would be minus X. Let me rephrase. Okay, let me let me rephrase. I knew I just confused you. I could see the looks on your face. All right, so let's start with where they're sailing. A is sailing which way? West, right? A is sailing west. So I'm going to put arrows going that direction because it's going west. B is sailing north. north. So I'm going to right? say it's going up. Okay, so ship A is going to be somewhere over here to the east of ship B. We don't know where east, but we know east. Oh, yes? so it's not directly east. Oh, okay. It doesn't say it's directly east, right? Okay, that's ship B is going north. Ship A is going this direction. Yes? Okay. So A is going this way. Sorry, B is going this way. A is going this way. Yes? Yes. We know right now at noon, at noon, A is 150 kilometers east of B, somewhere. Yes? Yes. Okay. It says ship B is sailing north at, so it gives us a rate for this one, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. So ship B is going north. So this would be a Y value, do you agree? So dy dt is 25 kilometers per hour. And what else? Yeah, dx dt, right, would be 35 kilometers per hour. Do you agree with that? So we know those. Those are given. 
dx dt equals 35 kilometers per hour. dy dt is 25 kilometers per hour. We are wanting to know how the distance between these, right? It says how far is the distance between the, them changing. So we're actually wanting to know the rate at which they change. Yes? Whatever. We'll call it Z. Call it H. Call it whatever. DZ, DT. Is that fair? Yes. Specifically, how many hours later? Four. Four hours later. So t when time is four hours. Fair? Okay. Yeah. Now, so X... Well, that's what we're getting ready to have to do. X squared plus Y squared equals Z squared. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do I know X? X? No. Oh, wait. Is that the 150? It says it's 150 mile kilometers, not miles, kilometers east. So that's the X. <laughs> it's part of X, yes. It's part of X, okay. Do we know how far this one is from, say, the origin? No. Okay. We know this is going to be a Y value. And we know this is an x value. Yes? Yep. Okay. So if I just did that derivative, I would get 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 2z dz dt. Do I have an x or a y? No. No. So I have to get one of these in terms of the other. The only thing I know is horizontal, right? Yeah, which is your x. So if b is somewhere in some x value, this would have to be 150 minus wherever that b is. Do oh, you agree yeah. with that? That makes sense, yes. Oh. If it was like uh, 5, 0, you would have to subtract 5 right. from the 150. Because you don't know where it's at, right? Okay. So would it, it here we can say this is 150 minus x. Yes. Okay. But couldn't we consider b the origin? Can you? So if that is the origin, but you still have to know that this is 150 miles east of there, right? Yeah. Which is why 150 would work if it consider that the origin, right? If we did, but can we? Why can't we? Do we know that it's at zero, zero? You need to tell me. You can't really consider it. You have to actually deal with the fact that this has to be some other value out there. I will try and, and convey it a little better. I'll think about that, how else I could convey it to you. All right, so if we're going to deal with the 150 minus x, then we know this would be 150 minus x squared plus y squared equals z squared, fair? Okay. We need to deal with the derivatives here. <coughs> So the derivative of this one would be 2 times 150 minus x squared. And then we have to do the derivative of the inside, not x squared. Sorry, just x. Yes? And the derivative of the inside would be negative 1. And dx dt. Is that fair? Okay. Plus 2y 
dy dt equals 2z dz dt. Yeah? It's a whole lot of stuff in there. But we still didn't get y in terms of dy. No, we're going to have to do that in a second. You're right. We did not. So here, negative 2 times 150 minus x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 2z dz dt. They all have 2's in them. Could I divide everything by 2? So I'm going to do that to get rid of it. Fair? Okay. So if I do that, then I would end up with what? Um, negative 150 minus x dx dt plus y dy dt equals z dz dt. Now, somehow I need to know x, y, and z. Yes? I know the rate of dx dt and dy dt. Yes? I need to know x, y, and z. Specifically, when my time is four hours. We're talking about a rate, distance equals rate times time here, aren't we? Think about what we're talking. We're talking about a ship sailing somewhere, yes? Mm -hmm. So my distance here for y would be the rate at which it's going times how many hours, wouldn't it? Isn't that going to give me the distance? What? If a ship is sailing from here to here mm -hmm. at 25 kilometers per hour for four hours, how far did it go? Um, more far by four. Right. It's going to go 100 kilometers, isn't it? That's going to be the distance it, sh it sailed in four hours, yes? So think about your distance time. Distance equals rate times time. It doesn't matter where the origin is. You're talking about distance equals rate times time. So your distance from wherever its starting point is is the rate, which is 25, times the time. Yes? So for y, my distance is going to be 4 times 25, or 100 kilometers. Yes? For x, just x, my x is going to be, in four hours, going 35 kilometers per hour, how far is that ship sailing? 70 and 70 is 140 kilometers? That'd be per hour, so. No, we're just talking about a distance right now, okay. right? So the distance was just kilometers, yes? Okay, yeah. And then for z, we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? So I could take the square root of 100 squared plus 140 squared, couldn't I? Wait, wouldn't it be 150 minus uh, Yes, it would. Thank you. So you would just plug in up there. So here, 150 minus x is 140. 150 minus 140 squared, thank you plus 100 squared. So z would be what? 10 squared plus 100 squared? One hundred plus 10,000? Yeah? So what I notice is this is 101 times 100, right? So 101 
times 100 means z would be 10 square roots of 101 because the square root of 100 is, one, is 10. So here I could see that it ended in 0, 0, which means it had to have been multiplied by 10, 100. So that means it had to have been 101 times 100, and I know the square root of 100 is 10. So, now we have all of the stuff we need, we can actually substitute in. Okay. So negative 150 minus x, which was 140, dx dt was 35, y was, what did I get for y, 100, dy dt was 25, you e also put, uh, or like mm, probably be a good idea. Okay. Or realize that I mean that would probably be smart because you're gonna have to figure out your your units. Ugh. So negative one fifty minus one forty, and that would be kilometers. Dx dt was times thirty five kilometers per hour plus y was 25 100 y was 100 kilometers dy dt was 25 kilometers per hour z was 10 square roots of 101 kilometers and we're looking for dz, dt. Yeah? Nope. Yep. Okay. So this is 10. Agreed? Or negative 10 times 35 is negative 350. Plus 100 times 25 would be 2,500 kilometers squared per hour equals 10 square roots of 101 kilometers dz dt. So 2500 minus 350 is 2150 kilometers squared over hours, yes? And here you would divide by 10 squared to 101, right? Or multiply by one over 10 squared to 101. And this is kilometers in the denominator, equals dz dt. So you could cancel out a kilometer, and you could actually cancel out a 10 there. So we would get dz dt when time is 4 equals 215 over the square root of 101. And this would be in kilometers per hour. Okay. That was a hard one. Really hard one. So... Um, six, seven, eight, like those are pretty important examples. So we're